Hello and welcome to the United Stand. This Thursday we have a huge game against our noisy neighbours, Manchester City, and it should be a blinder. Now some people look at City and go, ooh, they only have success because of their rich Arab owner. Or, they have a team filled with soulless mercenaries. And I'd be inclined to agree. So, most fans probably can't wait for kickoff. So until then, you can just watch this a thousand times, or, or just once, and then go back to waiting. It's your call. Now there have been moments against City that we as United fans have loved, and some that we haven't, but either way, there have been many encounters and most have not been short on drama. So, here are our top 5 most shocking derby moments. At number 5, RVP sinks an injury time winner. In 2012, City pinched the title from United in the last minute of the last game of the season, on sodding goal difference. It hurt. Sodding City. Anyway. Fergie's response was to buy RVP and it worked. United and City hit December with just three points between them and the derby landed in the second week. City would have been confident going into this game as they had been unbeaten at home in the Premier League for years and a victory against us would have seen them draw level on points. However, the inclusion of Mario at... <clears throat> not that one. Yes, that one. Did City no favours and they found themselves two goals down with less than 30 minutes gone thanks to two Rooney goals. Ashley Young then added a third, which was wrongly disallowed, which reminds us that the FA's anti-United agenda is nothing new. City then scored twice through Torre and a Zabaleta equaliser, with the latter coming just four minutes before full time. As the old Dutch saying goes, cometh the hour, cometh the van. <clears throat> van Percy, that is. Okay, it's probably not a Dutch saying, but either way, he scored a simple but important goal that deflected off his old teammate, Nazri who, by the way, had chosen City over United. It was sweet, and it won't be forgotten. At number four, why always me? Now, whilst this is a United channel, despite what some keep saying, it's hard to talk about the most shocking moments without mentioning some of the bad ones, and there are no worse than the 6-1 loss at home to City. I'll not linger on this one for too long. In 2011, City were on the road to their first title win, and this became apparent when we got royally slapped. Balotelli, who had been in the headlines that week for setting off fireworks in his house, opened the scoring and revealed the now infamous Why Always Me slogan under his top. We got to half-time without conceding any more, but then, like a drunk on his wedding night, we were all over the place and had no end product. Mario scored a second early in the second half, Evans got sent off and then Aguero added a third, then Zeko, then Silva, then Zeko again. Fergie called it his worst moment as a United manager and City went five points clear and, of course, went on to win the league. Let's move on. At number three, it's a captain keen on revenge. <clears throat> okay, the starting point here is that Roy Keane is a legend and arguably the best captain United will ever have. But he does have a temper and that was never more apparent than when he destroyed Alf Inge Haaland's leg. Here's the context. Back in 97, United had played Haaland's then club, Leeds, and Keane, in a bid to trip him up towards the end of the game, swung out a leg, but in doing so, he managed to tear his cruciate ligament. Haaland claims to have thought Keane was faking it, so he stood over him, giving him grief. Keane was then out for a whole season, and without him, we squandered an 11-point lead in the league to allow Arsenal their first Premiership trophy. Fast forward to 2001, Haaland was then at City, and Keane was set on revenge. In his autobiography, Keane said, I'd waited long enough, I f***ing hit him hard. The result was a red card and a fine for Keane, and Haaland never played a full game of football again. The feud has continued since, but in the context of Manchester derbies, this is certainly one of the most shocking moments. At number two, it's Owen in Fergie time. In 2009, it finally happened. Ronaldo followed his dream of playing for Madrid and buggered off to Spain. We weren't exactly moving mountains in the transfer market with Antonio Valencia being our only new signing. Out of nowhere we found out that Michael Owen was in talks with Sir Alex. Now it's well documented that Owen has made some dreadful decisions in his life. For example, he signed for Liverpool. He then signed for Real and kept their bench warm. He then went to Newcastle for four years before seeing the light and joining United. Fans were dubious, but the shortfall of goals that Ronaldo left had to be plugged somehow. In September, we came up against City and it was a great game. Rooney opened the scoring two minutes in. Barry equalised. 
Fletcher made it 2-1 after the break, but Bellamy made it two apiece just a few minutes later. Fletch then got a second on 80 minutes, making it 3-2, and it looked like the game was over until Bellamy snatched an equaliser on 90 minutes. There were four minutes of added time, which already seemed like a lot. Mark Hughes was livid as the clock hit 94 minutes. It looked like City had done enough. Then as time pushed into Fergie time, on just about 96 minutes, Giggs laid through an inch-perfect pass and Owen buried it. Old Trafford erupted. It was a moment of sheer adulation for us. Sadly, we went on to miss out on the title to Chelsea by just a point, but this victory is still a fond memory for United fans. At number one, it's Rooney, heels overhead. City were on a poor run of form in 2011 going into this derby, whereas United had only just lost their first game of the season, so things were going fairly well. The situation with Rooney, however, already seemed to be on the wane, as an ankle injury was affecting his game and it took him until January to score his first goal in open play. This was also the season where he tried to force a move away from United due to our perceived lack of investment in new players at the time. Some fans were furious, others thought he had a point, but either way, like a dog on fireworks night, many became wary and untrusting. This game came along and offered Rooney the perfect opportunity to bring about complete redemption in the eyes of the fans. Berber and Little P were benched and Rooney was trusted as a lone striker. Now before you clean out your ears and rub your eyes in disbelief, let's remember the Rooney this was. Yes, the 2010-11 season when this happened was hampered by injury, but he had scored 34 goals in the season before and he scored 34 in the season after. He was still a force. This game was at the point in the season when it wouldn't really have mattered too much if we had lost. However, the win would have offered security and it was the difference between us being two points ahead of City or seven points. The game itself was tense and had a few narratives, such as a 21-year-old Smalling schooling Tevez throughout the game and Nani having a blinder, but the moment of sheer magic came in the 78th minute. Nani whipped the ball in and Rooney, showing his instinctive abilities, adjusted his body, leapt into the air and struck the ball into the corner of Joe Hart's goal. It was an iconic goal and in light of Rooney's decline, it's important that we as United fans remember these moments of genius from the days when he would have walked into any team starting 11. So that's our list. Do you agree with the order? Can you think of any more shocking Derby moments? If so, get involved and comment below. As ever, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can follow me here on Twitter if you like. Thanks for watching.